Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dian Karunik, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 warlike exotics in Destiny 2. So I'm going to start saying some stuff to you. So if you don't care about this stuff and you just want to see the top 10, you can skip to this part of the video. It's on screen right now with a time you can skip to, but I find this stuff to be pretty important. It'll answer a lot of questions that you may have about my spreadsheets, how I collect data and all that stuff. And of course, there's cute animals and free stuff. So who doesn't like cute animals and free stuff? Right. So, this is going to be a list of my personal favorite Warlock Exotics to use. This is not a definitive list of the best of the best as confirmed by the community. This is just my subjective list. I've rated these exotics for both PvE and PvP. And as you'll see in my spreadsheets, I have those rankings for every single one of my exotics. And if you wanted to get your hands on these spreadsheets, these are completely fully public, as are all of my spreadsheets that I have in beautiful dark theme, color code, links, all the beautiful stuff and recommendations. You can find that over at my Discord server, link in the description down below. And in my Discord, there's going to be a channel called hashtag spreadsheet stocks. And in there, around the date that this video came out in, you'll find a link to this spreadsheet, as well as a link to all of my spreadsheets and docs that I make. Also, if you like to win free stuff like Astro A40 headsets, blue microphone products, and control free gift codes, I have a giveaway going on right now that ends literally today. So make sure you enter it. Link in the description down below. Very simple. Just make sure you do it. And I have these giveaways monthly. Pretty much from this, the middle of the month to the end of the month, I have a giveaway. Pretty much the same thing every time which is awesome. And of course, thank you to those sponsors for supporting me and of course, supporting this giveaway. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be able to do these giveaways. So make sure you check out their products and their discount codes that I have that will support me and them in the description down below. So this is the fifth time I'm doing the voiceover in this section. If there's any aspiring content creators out there, might I recommend unmuting your mic? It does help. All right, so moving on to the main content of this video, we're going to be looking a deep dive into the spreadsheet, talking about all of these exotics. For the non-ranked ones, we're going to go very briefly. So if you had any specific questions or concerns about those, leave a comment down below about it. And then, of course, working our way backwards through the honorable mentions and the top 10, talking about why these items are specifically good for the meta. The idea here is I want to give you a structure so you can understand the meta, so you don't need to keep coming back to videos like this, so you can better understand stuff in the wild. But of course, please please do keep coming back to these videos because I, I do need to feed myself. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the Apotheosis Veil. Probably the coolest thing about it is its name. Apotheosis is a really cool sounding word that means divinity. For the most part, getting this stuff back from popping your super isn't really that great, and there's a lot of other things I'd rather use. I have another world. You get a very small generation speed, like 1 to 5% kind of area, and you highlight targets you cannot see them through wall. In my opinion, it's just kind of below average. The Stag. You get better generation for your rifts, but that's really not that important. You can just have a better recovery. And there's other exotics that do it better, like the Vespers of Radius. Verity's Brow. You use energy weapon kills to give you more grenades and your teammates more grenades, but having grenades is not really that mission critical. Aeon Soul. Need I say more? Claws of Ahamkara, you get an additional melee charge. Pretty much any time it says you get an additional charge, I really don't care about it. And in this instance, I'd rather have a melee-based exotic that gives me certain benefits, like regeneration for my health or regeneration for certain abilities. I just don't care about an additional charge. Getaway Artist, almost in the top 10, definitely a very functional and very fun exotic. Changes your grenade into an Arc Soul on your shoulder. That's a lot better version of Arc Soul, by the way. It's not just a regular one. It's a sentient Arc Soul that shoots a lot faster with a lot more damage can really help out in a lot of engagements in both PvE and PvP, like an increased amount of damage in PvP. People get scared by it all the time. And it can also be refreshed, the sentient version, by a rift. So definitely something really nice, and it counts as grenade killed. So for bounties and for armaments, like taken armament, hive armament, fallen armament, this actually counts as grenade kills and gives you heavy ammo. The sun bracers, you have to get a charge melee kills to get like five solar grenades, pretty much infinite grenades as fast as you can fire them, but getting melee kills is hard to do in end game so it's fun in the middle ground of pve but not much past that winter's guile an exotic that used to be broken the amount of melee damage you could do was disabled many times over many seasons and it's kind of in a place where it, it does decent but not enough to really warrant going in for a melee chromatic fire kind of a gimmick exotic it makes it so your kinetic weapons always have dragonfly explosions on them kind of fun with ace of spades with the double explosions but not really that effective because again it's a constant amount of damage so in the higher realms of stuff, not really that much damage as a percentage of their health. The Sanguine Alchemy, an exotic 
Sonic that used to be really cool, kind of like a one-eyed mask in PvP that nobody really talked about, and then they completely changed out its interesting, fun, and useful perk for a completely useless one that makes your wrists last longer as you get kills while in your rift. Talk about walking backwards. I mean, it made sense you didn't want people to just move over from what I had mass to sanguine alchemy, I get it, but like, a completely worthless perk. Starfire Protocol, you get an additional fusion grenade charge and you recharges from empowered weapon damage, so in your empowering rift, and of course fusion grenade kills give you rift energy. So you can see the cycle here, staying in rifts, get fusion grenade kills, get more rifts, keep on going. Kind of fun, but just not good enough. And it definitely depends on getting certain types of kills, and in the end game you want healing rifts. Kind of loses its effect. Storm Dancer's Brace, making it so you can do more damage for Storm Trance kills. I find that Storm Trance is just not damaging enough to warrant it in high level PvE. Vespers of Radius, probably one of the best exotics for Rift Regeneration if you specifically need Rift Regeneration, because all you need is enemies around you. But it's not enough to really do anything that useful. Might as well just have max recovery and then a Tournament of Grace where you heal your allies. Geomag Stabilizers, definitely a really good exotic making it so your Chaos Reach Super could last twice as long if you're just shooting at a single target that does not die, but I find that I often just use Crown of Tempest whenever I'm using Arc anyways because I like those benefits better and not often using this on bosses anymore. I'm using it more on elite enemies and this does fall off against elite enemies. And finally the Promethean Spur, making it so your day break kills, meaning your actual super kills, make empowering and healing rifts on all the kills, covering the battlefield in these rifts, which is cool, and I wish they would do more stuff like that, but I just don't know when I would want to use it. On top of that, uh, Daybreak is not very powerful these days. Right, so with the main section out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the honorable mentions, starting off with the Felwinter's Helm, one of the new exotics from this season that actually got disabled because of an issue with it. At first glance, I thought this was just the same as the Cowl or the Severance Enclosure. However, it does not have a constant effect. It has a scaling effect, which makes it much more interesting. So instead of just dealing damage around you or going invisible, it makes it so all of the enemies around you get disoriented, so like a smoke bomb effect. Even in PvP, you get that smoke bomb effect, and and it weakens them. Similarly to a tether, it makes you do that much extra damage to them, and they are all marked by a little purpley effect. So just by going and getting a charged melee kill in PvP, you make everybody around you with a 10 meter diameter, which is pretty significant, and all of you, all of them are completely disoriented with smoke bomb. So it's pretty fun. Although the other honorable mention, we have the Phoenix Protocol, an exotic that actually used to be number one in the entire game back when Well of Radiance was like the choice because you're near invincible and you're just handling every activity with near invincibility. So getting more wells is always really nice to have. And I still actually use this in Grandmaster Nightfalls. It's my literal only one choice that I have. But in all of the other circumstances, I'd rather use a different exotic. For raids, I have Lunafaction Boots. For PvP, I have a slew of other options. This is not really that useful. So it's just one of those exotics that are very specific activities like Reckoning and Grandmaster Nightfalls. Definitely good, but in the rankings, not top 10. Moving on to the top 10, starting up at number 10, we have the Wings of Sacred Dawn. Used to be my number one least favorite exotic in the entire game because it used to just hang you in the air with more accuracy, which in my opinion was just a negative benefit. Now it's gonna be in the top 10. Rest in peace, Eternal Warrior, the new number one worst exotic in the game. Now what they changed about it is that, you know, you still hang in the air, you still get your reduction in flinch, you still get increased accuracy, but you now also get a damage resistance. 15% damage resistance, not a lot, but something that's really strong. Not a lot of things give you just general resistance. The strategy with this exotic is you fly up with a sniper rifle up high, you aim down sights, get better flinch resistance, fire at an enemy, and then Icarus dash out of the area so that you get out of their view very quickly, very violently. This is one of those high skill floor, high skill ceiling kind of exotics, so it definitely takes a while to get used to. And there's really not many uses in PvE. Coming up at number nine, perhaps a controversial pick, we have the Ophidian Aspects. Used to be a lot more useful, a lot more prevalent in PvP. The main reason why it has fallen off is because a lot of weapons these days have fallen off because they all have good handling or good handling perk like Quick Draw. Mindbender's Ambition, Bellwinter's Lie, Beloved, all of these have Quick Draw as an option. And Quick Draw basically maxes out your handling for both switching to aiming down sights that you don't need exotics like this. But if you don't have weapons with good aim down sights, good ready speed, or anything close to Quick Draw, a fitting aspect solves that issue. This season they have increased the melee range for warlocks because of the fact they melee slower than titans and hunters and you can double down with the fitting aspects and do even more melee range and as a per
personal note, being able to reload weapons faster does change how you like a certain weapon. For example, Not Forgotten in PvE, really bad but it also has a really bad reload speed. As soon as you make the reload speed better, it becomes usable. The same thing I found for Better Devils back in year one. If you chose the extended mags, the gun was just unusable. If you didn't, it had a decent reload time and very fun to use. Don't underestimate reload speed, especially next season when they're gonna be nerfing a lot of reload speed perks. This exotic might have a resurgence. Coming up at number eight, we have the Karnstein Armlet, a dangerously underrated exotic, especially for PvP. Whenever you get a melee melee kill, any melee kill, no matter what, you restore about 60% of your health and you get a continuous regeneration that is rift speed regeneration for 8 seconds. So you go in there against 3 enemies, you get your shotgun melee getting your health back after shooting you, you get your regeneration, you shotgun melee the next guy, again get a full regeneration of your health and 8 more seconds of regeneration and then you can shotgun melee the next guy people will be confused by how you're getting your health back. In middle to high PvE, like Altars of Sorrow, you can stay in front of the bubble constantly just by getting melee kills. So it's very strong in that, however, it falls off quite sharply as you get into the higher level PvE. Coming up at number seven in this top 10 countdown, we have the Astrocyte Verse, an exotic that in my opinion is a bit underrated, underused by the community. I should be seeing a lot more blinking warlocks in general. In Destiny 1, they were everywhere, and the blinking hunters as well. If you've never heard of it, its main perk you blink further and more frequently, allowing you to chase down targets more effectively and escape better, and more importantly, your weapon's ready quickly out of blink and your radar remains up, which was usually the biggest issue with it is that you become completely disoriented, teleporting across the map, not knowing where the enemy is, and this just solves all of those issues. So my question is, if people blinked all the time in Destiny 1, Without this at all, why aren't they blinking more often now that we have this exotic? This thing can be used to disgusting uses. So, try it out. It does take a bit to get used to. Try it out. You can get pretty disgusting effects with it. Moving on to number six in this top 10 countdown, moving away from its top five spot at number five, we have the Skull of Dyrum Kara. Now this exotic used to be like a number three for me. It was a whole lot more fun until they nerfed all the super generating exotics, making it so five kills with your Nova Bomb didn't just give you your full Nova Bomb, which in my opinion makes sense. It was kind of overpowered. So a lot of people dropped this. It became a lot less useful. However, a lot of people are still grossly underestimating these super generating exotics because the fact is, if you can use your super and get half of your super back from using your super, you can use your super twice as often. And as you get closer to the end game, Master and Grandmaster Nightfall's raids, getting your super more often is extremely important. It's basically how you handle most engagement. And Nova Bomb is a very damaging super. So it's always gonna kill enemies pretty much all the way to the end, except for the highest levels of it. However, technically, Doomfang and Raiden Flux are gonna be your better options for ad slaying supers, but it is in the lineup for sure. Coming up at number five in this top 10 countdown, we have the Controverse Hold. Perhaps a controversial pick, especially after the slew of nerfs to Controverse Hold and Supernova, but honestly, I still like it. So if you've never heard of it, basically, again, why do I keep saying basically? You get damage resistant while charging your grenade, then send your grenade out as like a shotgun effect that does a lot of damage and can one-shot enemies. And for your grenade hits, you get a random amount of grenade energy on hits, which allows you to chain your grenades, which is strong, especially when when they're a one-shot capability. Now what they did is they reduced the amount of resistance you have, they made the supernova a tighter spread, they made it do less damage, they made the damage fall off worse, they did tank it in a lot of different ways, which is why this is probably controversial, but I still like using it. The gameplay is still satisfying, it is still useful, and I would still recommend it. And as a personal note, I actually use this in PvE. Anytime I need to get grenade kills for a certain bounty and I don't want to use a specific type of grenade for a triumph, like for example, uh, scatter grenades may be a little bit more difficult to get kills with. Technically, Controverse Hold Supernova grenades count as scatter grenades if you're using scatter grenades. Just a little things you learn along the way. Now, if somebody could tell me how I could get spike grenade kills as the hunter in this same kind of way, please tell me because I am so done with using spike grenades, they suck. Moving on to number four in this top 10 countdown, we have Nezarek Sin, an exotic that was resisting for a very long time, mostly because whenever I used Void, I just wanted to use Skull of Dyrum Kara, but over time I realized that Nezarex has a better potential. The idea here being that you're using a Void Energy, Void Heavy, Void Subclass, Void Grenade, Void Melees, and you have a lot of Void Damage giving you a lot of Void Energy back. 
So when you're using your void grenades or your void melees, you get void energy kills, giving your void energy melee and grenades back, and it just kind of cycles while using your recluse. Over time, I've realized that that is not the most important part, so you can actually use this with any of the subclasses if you're using recluse, because I'm getting most of my kills all the time with recluse anyways, and getting your abilities back. Definitely an omni-useful, very exciting exotic, definitely in the middle to high level PvE stuff, and something that can be used in PvP as well, because all you have to do is use a void weapon. Moving on to number three in this top 10, we have the transversive steps, an exotic that I would like to describe as always good. I, I almost just said basically, uh, basically, <laughs> just, just lean into it now. Basically, increased sprint speed, which is always nice to have, faster running, get to where you need to be faster in PvE, able to escape battles and chase down targets faster in PvP. Always nice to have better sprint speed, and on top of that, often overlooked, you automatically reload your equipped weapon after sprinting for a second, which is really nice for weapons that reload slowly, like your heavy machine guns or any of your heavy weapons, or slow reloading weapons like 110 hand cannons, especially with the nerf to reload perks coming next season, Exotics like this will become more and more useful. And specifically in PvP, if you're shotgun running, you can sprint at targets, auto-reload your shotgun, especially if it's a slow reloading shotgun without slide shot. It's nice. Coming up at number two, we have the Luna Faction Boots. Obviously, the only place you'd use these are gonna be in PvE because of their ability to cause your weapons to max out their reload speed in your rifts and your wells, they are always being used in raids. So almost every time you'll have a Warlock in a raid, put down a well, a Titan put down a bubble, and you get the maximum DPS. An often overlooked part about this exotic is that it also makes your empowering rifts and subsequently your wells give you double the range. Your hand cannons then get pulse rifle ranges, which is really strong. And if you're using Attunement of Grace while also having your teammates stand in your empowering rifts, you recharge your rifts a lot faster. And then the cycle continues and you can do a lot of damage from a lot of range very effectively. And finally, coming up at number one, we have the Crown of Tempest. Now, if you were to ask me, without my looking into all this and creating these spreadsheets, what is the best Warlock exotic in the game, I don't know if I would say Crown of Tempest right away. And what I'm trying to say by this is that Warlocks don't really have that many game-breaking exotics. You know, the Titans, they've got their Antaeus Wards, they used to have the One-Eyed Mask. The Hunters, they have the Celestial Nighthawk, which is crazy powerful in PvE. But for Warlocks, the best exotic for them is going to be an 8.5 out of 10 for both PvE and PvP. And I use this as a relative scale on how much it is a guaranteed must-choose pick. Whereas, for example, One-Eyed Mask, back in the day, when it was crazy powerful, 10 out of 10. Because every time you play PvP, you pick the one-eyed mask. And that's the relative scale that I use. So when I say it's an 8.5 out of 10, I mean that it's really good. And for the uses that you need to use it for, it is some of the best. If you've never heard of this exotic, your arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities. So any of your grenade, melee, and super kills will increase the recharge rate of your grenade and melee and increase the duration of storm trance. Now, from what I've heard, Chaos Reach doesn't count for this increased super duration, but I still use Crown of Tempest for Tomb of Control, which is one of the better PvP subclasses. As far as PvP goes, even though Arc Web was nerfed, which used to be the most ridiculous Arc Web shocky shocky across the map kind of things, it is still useful. And you're going to be getting Arc Web kills randomly, especially with Arc Bolt grenades. You're probably going to be getting just kills with Arc Bolt and getting more grenade energy back from just getting those grenade kills is so nice. And on top of that, Stormcaller is a very useful PvP super that can be extended with your Conduction Tines. Anyways, that is going to be pretty much it. That is the top 10 and the full rundown of the Warlock meta, in my opinion. Again, this is totally subjective, how I use these, how I like to play as Warlock, and how I consider these exotics. But there is most likely something that I miss along the way. So if there is something that I missed that you think I should know about, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure your comment is not abrasive. Don't just say, this guy is a sack of bastard. True story, I love that comment. And of course, don't just tell me what you like, you have to tell me why and how it compares to everything else. I can't tell you how many people told me Risk Runner should have been in my top 10 PvE primaries, but nobody really told me something I didn't know. I know that it gives you 50% damage reduction from Arc. I know that it auto-reloads your mech. I know that it causes Shocky Shocky, but none of that really matters if there's no Arc damage involved. It's very situational. That is just one example for weapons. Give me your examples in the comments down below. But that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Night Chronic. Hopefully this voiceover worked, and I'll see you guys on the next one.